Access provided by PlayStation. All right, I have for you some more tips and hidden mechanics in Helldivers 2, brackets, that I didn't already cover in my last Helldivers video. Now let's get into it. I'm Boomstick Alex, and if you happen to be new here, hey, hit subscribe. I th think you're gonna like this one. Okay, if you pop a stim, you get a few seconds of rapid health regeneration that can be harnessed to counter fall damage, even if you majestically dive from really high up. This allows you to quickly reposition in an entirely different way than what you might be used to. So if you ever need to tactically ascend downward or initiate a delicate surprise attack, this is exactly the type of thing you are trained to do as a hell diver. Some planets will have these puffy pod things that expel smoke, but they also have a propulsion effect when destroyed. You might get the same idea that I had. You can bravely stand on these things and shoot or melee them to launch yourself. Ideally in the direction you were planning on going, or at least away from a swarm or something that might be on your tail. Combine that with the previous tip I explained, and the health stim effect can negate that fall damage thud when you land. Some armor sets are going to come with the medkit passive, which extends the length of that stim buff. So that gives you a longer duration for the health regen and the stamina bonus after you pop a stim. Ever notice that orbital strikes come in from different directions and trajectories? Well, on the outer edges of the map, orbitals come down at a steeper angle, but more straight downward the closer to the center of the map you are. That's because these shots are actually coming directly from your ship hovering up above. You might feel a little bit cautious around your own turret, since they can blast you right in the face. Here's a totally safe spot though, just climb on top of the thing. That turns you into a double paddy sentry, and the auto-rotation of the turret can help indicate the direction of incoming threats. You watch its back, it'll watch yours. Sometimes. Just don't try climbing on top of the mortar turret. Actually, that was kind of fun. Now, did you know that every Helldiver comes equipped with a completely royalty-free orbital strike that they can infinitely use? All you have to do is go out of bounds for 10 seconds, and your own ship will endlessly barrage the map to celebrate your alterations to the mission parameters. At least until you die, that is. If you put on a light armor set and just continually sprint, you can avoid getting blasted for quite a while and rack up some free kills. But this is really annoying to do if you're part of a team, beware. Tanks are really easy to take down, you just need to split up your team between opposite sides of it. Then whichever group it's not aiming at can spam that big glowy weak spot on the back of it. The auto cannon might be my absolute favorite weapon in the entire game, and that thing can easily take down a tank in just a few well placed shots. When you need to rotate these satellites to a specific direction, there's an audio cue when it's in the correct spot and another audio cue when it exits the sweet spot. If you're all by yourself, that's going to be pretty helpful. Also, after you activate a satellite, your map will update with all available points of interest and lootable locations. Weapons have somewhat hidden armor penetration values, like this submachine gun glancing right off this enemy's hard shell. The revolver is also listed as having low armor penetration like the SMG does, but this will actually pierce right through that level of carapace. I see it, everyone stop just running straight through these big shrubs. These are not just video gamey graphical effects, these are snares that restrict your movement speed. So learn to dodge that bush. Or if you really have a foliage vendetta, explosives can clear the things out. Sometimes you might come across this stockpile of ammo with a large blue supply container right next to it. That can be opened with explosives, and that can yield extra currencies and or a heavy weapon. Now a few people in my last Helldivers video were asking what the actual button is to use the supply pack when it's on your own back. On PS5, it's going to be down on the D-pad, and on PC, it's defaulted to number 5. Another thing you guys asked me was, what build do I primarily use when playing solo? Well, I like to use a fast light armor set when going alone, like the FS-38 Eradicator with the Fortified Passive. That reduces recoil by 30% when you're crouched or prone, and gives an extra 50% resistance to explosive damage, which will reduce those surprise deaths. 
Main weapon is the SMG-37 Defender submachine gun. Sidearm is the P4 Senator revolver, and the grenade is the G16 Impact. The Collins I use, I have my absolute favorite AC-8 autocannon, the Orbital Laser, the AC-8 autocannon sentry, and if I'm going up against the robot enemies, I'll take an explosive airstrike like the Cluster Bomb. But against the alien bugs, I'll take something with fire damage like the Napalm Airstrike. And for my booster, I'm using the Vitality Enhancer, which reduces the chance of receiving injuries when you're hit. That's what's working for me, and if you want to see how I use this setup, here is some raw footage of me soloing a Difficulty 7 mission. As always, I'm Alex, thanks for checking this out today, and down in the comments, tell me your favorite current build. Let me know.